Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. Before I jump into the content today, I did want to ask you to please leave a like on this video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then please do so now. I would absolutely love to have you. So the PlayStation 5 received an update right over here on April the 19th, 2023. And this takes the PlayStation 5 up to version 07.2. We've improved system software performance and stability. We've improved the messages and usability on some screens. And we've updated the DualSense Edge wireless controller device software to improve stability. For the most part, whenever a PlayStation 5 update comes out, what features that they can port over to the PlayStation 4, they typically do so because mainly the PlayStation 5 is where all of the engineering efforts are at right now. The PlayStation 4 is in a bit of a maintenance mode. Now, with this update with 07.20, we did not see any sort of update for the PlayStation 4. So pretty much what that means was is that they weren't able to port any of the things that they were working on over to the PlayStation 4. Because again, even with the DualSense Edge wireless controller, as far as I know, that only works on the PlayStation 5. And again, if you are interested in homebrew, you absolutely want to avoid this update. Next up, there was a great release for Apollo Save Tool, bumping it to version 1.40. If we scroll down into this, we can see a couple of the features that was added. So there was some new network tools, such as a URL downloader tool. So you can download links that is in one of these formats right here. There was a simple local web server. This would allow you to have access to a drive through a browser so you could download files and so forth. There was also a hex editor that was built in for the save data files as well as a way to activate offline accounts without creating those XML files that we did in the past. And then there was a user defined online database URL. So if you're hosting your own save somewhere, maybe you wanna point Apollo to that, well, now you can do so. And then there was a few other minor changes there. Now, I did create a video on this that shows each one of the features, such as the built-in hex editor. I'll provide a link to this video where you can check it out. And again, that's another reason why you would probably want to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Next up, there has been some movement from Slayer's Gorvi. And I know a lot of folks have been kind of wondering, where is Slayers at? We haven't been seeing anything from them. Well, in the background, there has been some movement, and I've located two different GitHubs where I've seen some of the movement happening. The first one is in the 900 host. And so you'll see right here, it says this is the PS4 jailbreak host for the 9.00 firmware. And if we go into commits, we can see that just about two weeks ago, he was fixing a bug here. Now, there wasn't a whole lot of movement in this repo. Really, the last time that there was a commit was back in June the 10th, 2022. So it is very nice to see that there is at least some work that is being done. Now, another repo that he was working in which has some relations, obviously, to the other repo, was the PS4 libjbc. So again, two weeks ago, what we could see here was, was that he fixed a wrong argument order in prison ref count increment. Now, this is obviously all good news because there's still work that Slayers is doing over on the PlayStation 4 side. And again, this one does correlate directly to the bug fix that was in the 900 host right here. Next up, there is a new version of Gold Hand that is 2.4 beta 13. And this has a couple of different things in it, such as improved FTP self-decryption, improved XML SHN parser, fixed the cheat navigation after rest mode, and then added search subdirectories and show package path features in debug settings. Now, most all of the hosts are already updated with this, but again, if you would like to see 
this in action, then I have another video that details and shows demos of all of the features which you can check out right here. And next up, a bit of PSVR2 news, and that is, is that there was this image right here that surfaced that showed a universal serial bus devices and the PlayStation VR2. Now, obviously, this was taken from Windows inside of the device manager, and there was a disclaimer that was added to this, and it said, what this means is that we now have an interface to talk with the PSVR2. It says, now we hit our next roadblock, which is PS5 PSVR2 authentication challenges. So what makes this, again, substantial is, is that now at least the PlayStation VR 2 with the universal serial bus devices is able to recognize that that device is there. But in order to gain full access to it, there are still the authentication challenges which haven't been beat yet. Now, there's all kinds of guides of using at least the original PS VR 1 with something like Steam VR, and there's lots of different workarounds for this. So what I think is, is that folks are kind of heading in that same direction with obviously a more modern VR device. Next, we have a bunch of different new assets for things such as themes. So we, there is this one right here by Anibus, which is a Street Fighter VI permanent theme. As you can tell, they do an amazing job on all of these different themes. They have more than just Street Fighter VI. Obviously, there's ones for Resident Evil 4 and much, much more. They've been featured on the PlayStation Homebrew channel here multiple times. So definitely give them a follow, but check out this theme if you are interested in that. They have also made some brand new icons for some of the new games that's currently out. Obviously something that you would use with Icon Mask by Lappy. So you can change your icons for things such as Dead Island, Two, which is another brand new release that just came out. There's a couple of other games here, and then Fatal Frame, which is also another brand new game that is out. So you can do things like change the icon that's shown in the PlayStation main menu. But that's not all for the design work. There is also some work right over here, and this is called PS5 Symbol 2.0, and there is 26 new symbols. And if we take a look at this, you can see that if you needed any of these assets in any sort of game, well, you could just download this application and you could pull them directly out of this app. So again, all of the things such as the controllers, the buttons there, what the trophies look like, some of the logos that's currently being used, the way the controller lists the battery properties, and then a few more down here. Next up, there was quite a bit of movement regarding playing Minecraft on a jailbroken PlayStation 4 online. Now, there is this video that came out, and there is a lot of great instructions on how to get this to run, but in the short, you would be able to take your Minecraft game that's on a jailbroken PlayStation 4, and you would be able to connect online and to be able to play it online. Now, this isn't using the PlayStation Network. I'm not exactly sure what is being done behind the scenes here, but one thing that I did notice while reviewing this video was, was that you did have to sign in with your Microsoft account. I believe that the patch that was made here is maybe somehow mimicking a play, or PC version of this that's being run, but again, I'm not 100% sure on that. But this has been reviewed and other folks have already said that this is working. So if you do know people that want to use their PlayStation 4 to play Minecraft online, well, you can do that with his patch. Next up, I just wanted to cover this really cool project because I thought it was just so incredible. And so if you scroll down in this project, what you'll see is that this is a USB to PlayStation mouse. So there was a PlayStation mouse that came out 
for the original PlayStation back in the day. Obviously, that PlayStation mouse is something that I've been wanting to acquire, but it is relatively expensive. Well, you can make your own with this tutorial right here. Now, there's a couple of things that's needed, such as a PlayStation controller cable with the connector, a Raspberry Pi Pico, and then this power module right here. There is great diagrams on how that you would set this up as well as a couple of different images. There's some links down here on how they were able to get this to work. There is a video that is out there. And so obviously this is in the CD player of the PlayStation 1. And I think it's just so awesome that they're able to kind of navigate and scroll around with this. Again, it's one of those projects that probably not a lot of people wants to do or to put the effort into, but I think it's just something really cool. And I like these sort of projects. So if you know of any, obviously let me know. Next up, back over to the PlayStation 4, we have a release by the one, the only, Lappy, and this is Duck Hunt Remake VR. So this is a game that will allow you to mimic Duck Hunt, which came out for the Nintendo, and you can use your PSVR device. Again, installation is super easy. Basically, you just head over to PKG zone right here and you download the package here and then just install it on your jailbroken PlayStation 4. And as long as you have a VR, you can relive your classic games that you might have played as a kid. Next up is again Resident Evil 4 Remake. So the one, the only illusion which has brought us so many different patches has released different types of patches for Resident Evil 4 Remake in terms of things such as 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Now, you can obviously use this with the brand new Gold Hen, and there's all of the instructions that's in here if you want to check that out. But in the latest patch, or at least the latest patch that was on his site here, it is a 30 FPS patch, and it says this forces the games to run at 30 FPS. There's also a couple of other ones here for a resolution scale of 83%, a 67%, a 50%, and then a 25%. And I believe this site may not be completely updated because I believe there's also another one that is for 60 frames per second. Obviously, most of these patches is going to be more beneficial if you're using a PlayStation for Pro, for example, but if you are using a base PS4 or maybe even the Slim, maybe you might be able to get a little bit out of it. Now, if you want to see what some of this looks like in action, there's a video that I will link to right here, which shows the different types of modes being ran and really just how well that it performs with the default or with using his patch. And then finally, since I've covered some of the PlayStation Plus monthly games, I wanted to just add that in here. Here are the games that is coming out. I mean, for the most part, Grid Legends is kind of neat. But yeah, for the most part, I don't think that these games are that amazing. But that is what Sony is giving away this month if you subscribe to their service. Okay, so that is going to do it for this one. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael.